All right, guys, today we're here with the Mitsubishi Hyperheat three ton unit, all for no cool. Let's check it out. All right, all right, looks like uh, we're not getting any display readings to the PCB board control board. We're going to test on cool, start test mode. It cranks up, there's a display reading, but after two seconds, the unit shuts off. Definitely something wrong, but no displayed error code. In this particular case, we have third party controls indoor, uh, Echo B, therefore, they're not showing us an error code inside either. What we'll do is check for control board failure. First, you want to check incoming voltage to the unit. Austin. Should see about 250 volts AC. We got the correct power voltage. Now we check incoming power to PCB board by way of CNAC, which is the red. This is what provides AC power to the control board. Should be getting at least 230 volts. We're getting the right right voltage 252 matching what's coming in from the terminal block now we check our dc power this guy right back here cn dc pink one never touch it it's got 300 volts dc it'll light you up and check the test points back here we should have at least 300 volts DC coming in. All right, CNDC, 337 volts DC. So we got all the correct power voltages coming into the unit. If CNDC and CNAC both have the correct voltage power, that means the outdoor PCB power control board is faulty. Visual inspection. In there I see what appears to be either rodent or gecko dropping. Some sort of lizard may have shorted this circuit board. It could also be anything like a surge inspection. In there, I see what appears to be either rodent or gecko dropping. Some sort of lizard may have shorted this circuit board. It could also be anything like a surge. Anything can cause this. It's highly recommended to add surge protectors to these units, or at least a whole home surge protector if you own one of these fancy hyperheat Mitsubishis.